Alright guys, hey, this is Ghoul. I'm doing my uh, video that I promised a long time ago and just have not gotten around to doing, where I'm going to talk about the first 20 or so hours in Persona 5, what my thoughts are, whether I like the game, what the changes are, how I see it going forward for higher level play, whether that's a speedrun or a challenge playthrough, uh, some of the changes, so on and so forth that they made, uh, how those really affect the game in my opinion. I'm going to try to, I'm going to avoid all story spoilers, in part because I don't really fully understand a lot of them myself. I know that sounds kind of weird, but my emphasis in playing this game has not been story. I figure I'll get a better understanding of that when I play in Japanese, and my Japanese isn't great to begin with, so I don't get a great knowledge of the story myself. Um, I'm going to go in-depth on kind of the battle system and things like that. Um, if you want, if you're like avoiding all spoilers for the game, let me just say that the game is very good. If you enjoyed Persona 3 or Persona 4, you should probably enjoy this. Um, after the, I'm going to go into a bit more depth after this. But yeah, if you want the one minute, do I want to buy this game when it comes out? The answer is yes. It's every bit as good as Persona 4. Persona 3 adds a lot of interesting new elements. Uh, I've very much enjoyed it so far. So I'm going to go ahead and just load up uh, a file. Let's see, 33 hours. This is probably f more like 40 hours into the game. Uh, due to the speed at which I've gone through cutscenes. Um, that's the game loading some DLC. Uh, not really a big deal. Okay. So, this is just loaded up from the middle. Um, the music in the game is absolutely fantastic. The art and, like, mu you know, the art of the game is amazing. Uh, the style is really cool. Uh, I, again, you don't need me to tell you this. We've all known this since the first couple trailers that the game was going to be pretty exciting looking. Uh, so, a couple things that are really nice. Cutscenes have fast forwarding without losing the music. I uh, Dungeons are all very unique, which is uh, really interesting. So, you know, in Persona 3 and Persona 4, you knew, okay, these sets of enemies can spawn on this floor. In this game, I believe depending on the day, I can tell you exactly what every enemy is before I fight it. So, if you get a back attack, you'll get one enemy. Like, so enemy locations are fixed because the dungeons are no longer randomized. And if I back attack an enemy, I'll get one pattern. If I get back attacked, I'll get another. And if I get a normal attack, I'll get a third. Uh, this is both kind of a blessing and a curse. It's very cool and it's nice for grinding in that I know exactly what I want to fight, and I can find it, and I can fight it, and I can kill it, and I get the experience from that. Uh, the downside is that it does mean that probably a lot of the grinding is going to be very fixed, as in I'm going to know exactly what I'm going to fight, what I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill it, and I'm going to move on. Um, so, they added some new elements to it. Let me go ahead and go into the menu again. If you're trying to avoid all spoilers, you might want to go ahead and back out now. Uh, cooperations are this game's version of Social Link. Uh, I believe it was it had Persona 4 had a different name for Social Links as well. Uh, what's new this time is that as opposed to just getting new abilities for your party members, you actually get new abilities for everything else in the game. So, uh, for example, one might help you get more experience from fights. Another one will lower the cost of items in the shop. Another one will allow you to negotiate for money when you're talking to enemies. Uh, it's a pretty cool system. It's pretty well done. Uh, it adds a lot of really interesting options because, again, talking from a speedrunning perspective, it now means that there's a lot more benefit to doing social links beyond just what it looks like. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot cooler. You know, we'll probably spend more time doing social links, I think, in this one. Um... So something else that's interesting for combat. Let's go ahead and go on. Don't really have. Let's go on Sandman. Why not? So if you go, you'll see we have two new elements. We've known about this for a while. What we didn't know was that they've kind of stumbled across the same problem that they've known for a while, which is that light and dark kind of suck in Personas Three and Four. They're very good for enemies and that they're low risk options. But if they ever hit, they're just annoying. They instant kill. They still have that, but like, if an enemy was only weak to light or dark, your only option was either instant kill them or do literally nothing to them and miss. 
So there are actually light and dark spells that do damage, as opposed to just doing that. It's funny because it's the same problem. They realized it in Four Apocalypse as well, that light and dark are just not usable. Uh, like, they're really good because of the instant kill factor, but... So they found different ways of balancing it above them. In Four Apocalypse, they made it where Smirking gives an instant kill property to them. In this game, they just separated out and added damaging versions of Hama and Mudo, which are Eha and... Uh, forget the Koha. But, so, there is no way, like there was in Persona 4, really, of getting... We'll, we'll, if you remember in the Persona 4 Golden Route, we get a sweet key that reflects every major element. Uh, physical, fire, electric, wind, and absorbs ice. Uh, that is going to be basically impossible in this game because of the extra, the full eight elements. Which I think is a pretty good decision on their part. Um, so, the map is way bigger. You've got so many more options. Something I think that's very cool is those cards actually denote where social links are. I do wish, you'll see if I go into Shibuya, it doesn't actually say where inside Shibuya the social links are. And it'll show them even for social links that you can't initiate due to your stats not being high enough, which kind of sucks. I disagree with that a little bit. I think it would be really easy for them to have put a card icon next to the area in town you should go to get them. Again, it's kind of a minor complaint, because once you know where they are, it's not that big a deal. But it does mean that I've done a lot of hunting for social links, uh, more so than I think I probably should have if they're going to tell me that there's a social link available there anyway. Um, so, I think that covers a lot of this. Uh, the days proceed much like they did in Persona 4. There's a lot more creativity in how they actually play out. Um, you can do a lot of different things. They added little mini-games to a lot of stuff. Unlocking stuff takes is usually a lot more creative and interesting than it was in Persona 4. Um... So, let's go ahead and load up a save that's around some combat. Should hopefully have one of them laying around somewhere. Uh, level 3. Those aren't palaces. Oh. This isn't scripted at all, so I'm just kind of going by the skin of my teeth here. So this is a relatively early file in the game, and I gotta mash through all the DLC that wasn't loaded on this file. Okay. Ah, uh, so I don't have access to sneaking on this file, which kind of sucks. So one of my biggest fears when I was playing this was that there's gonna be no way of avoiding combat. Uh, the game actually gives you enough tools to avoid combat, though, using sneaking. Where, if there's a corner, an edge, you can actually crouch and hide underneath it. Enemies will never see you. Uh, which means that I think movement in this run is going to have some very cool applications. So this file also doesn't have access to running. Like, your movement speed is so much faster. Like, this is the default, and there's also a dash option that allows you to run faster. So really, really changes how everything does. This is kind of like the Shadow Yukiko, or Shadow Chie fight in Persona 4 Golden. Like, it's opening things up slowly, but there's still a lot of options that are left that the game hasn't really given me access to that I'd like to show off, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, you can see, like, just the movement speed in general is much faster than Persona 4 Golden, and that's kind of necessary because the dungeons are huge. Mm. We're talking... Uh, seven or eight floors, and each of those floors being about twice the size of one of the dungeons in Persona 4 Golden. With just a lot more going on in each of them because of all the uh, abilities to sneak around and do things, it really feels like a stealth action game as much as an RPG. Um, the combat added a couple of new options. I actually like most of them. The only one that I don't really like is how you recruit new personas. I don't really like the negotiation mechanic in SMT games, which... I know it's one of those things that, like, true SMT fans are going to be like, oh, you know, you just haven't done it enough. And I'm like, no, I've done it. And it was Pink Pajamas that told me that even in, in Nocturne, 
If you save state at the start of a demon negotiation and go through it, if you can recruit the demon, you will recruit it. If you can't, you won't be able to. So he literally just mashes through the demon negotiations because it's the same as actually trying. And I, I feel a lot of that here. It just feels kind of really up to chance. Um, it kind of breaks the game in a couple places as well. Um, but yeah, I don't really love that. Like it's got a lot of cool elements to it. I like that it means your enemies have a lot more uniqueness to them. But as far as the actual negotiations go, I can take or leave it. It doesn't really add that much over even just what shuffle time does. It does mean that you can get exactly the personas you want when you want them as long as the recruitment uh, luck is on your side. But yeah, the RNG for stuff was fixed in Nocturne. And from what I can tell, this is a much easier version of it. There's not really... It's very hard to start a negotiation and then lose your turn because of it, which happens a lot in SMT4. Uh, and I'm sure some people are going to say, like, oh, but your options do matter, and doing this will cause them to do that. And yes, I believe that they do that some, but again, it, it feels like chance, even if it isn't necessarily actual chance in the in SMT4 Apocalypse and SMT4. So it kind of, like, punishes you a little bit for not for stuff you really just mm. can't know. Again, not the biggest deal, but a little bit of that is here as well. Uh, it doesn't have access to swinging a sword here yet either. Um, Baton Touch is really cool. I actually really like what it does, because it means that you can snowball your attacks real easily, where you do, you'll do you knock them down with one character, pass off to the next, do more damage with them, get a knockdown again, pass it off. Uh, it's kind of just an evolution of the general knockdown mechanics they had. Uh, adds a lot, really fun, definitely enjoy doing it. Trying to think what else. Uh, I think the speedrun is going to be about the same like this Persona 4 Golden. I think it's going to end up being 11 hours. I think it's going to be a much more skill based run, actually, because uh, of the way movement and everything else is in this game. There's just so much more to the movement in it. The downside is I think the combat is much more random, at least, or is going to be more random. Uh, on harder difficulties, most bosses, as far as I can tell, I've had to just uh, play with hoping they miss, which is going to make some of them kind of inconsistent. I might mess around with playing on normal before I actually move up to a hard difficulty, just for that purpose. Uh, difficulty is swappable at any time. I have not played around with Reflect much. I don't know if it's going to be as broken as it was in Tokyo Mirage Sessions or not. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, this is hopefully a pretty good evaluation of what this game's upper level play is going to look like. I think it's really fun. The uh, Hopefully it sticks out pretty well. Uh, there's not too much more I'd want to talk about. I could talk, I guess, a bit about the bosses. But I feel like going too in-depth on them would be kind of going into spoiler territory. Um, if you guys are really curious, I might put out another video that just showcases my thoughts on the bosses. Um, I'm through four dungeons so far. I looked up how many there are, but I won't talk about it because, again, that could go into spoiler territory for some people. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it.